to my last video, so welcome back to my channel. Now, due to the recent events regarding coronavirus, most of us students were placed under quarantine. Social isolation. Ergo, I found the perfect opportunity to reboot my channel. Now, over the past few months, I've painted several landscapes because it's a nice relaxing hobby. Today, we will visit the technique in masterpieces once presented by our esteemed figure, Bob Ross. But there's a catch. I ran out of most of my green and blue paint, so I'll have to work with what is left. Now let us begin. Welcome back to my table. Really quickly, I'm going to prepare my art station and get the paints ready with the canvas. I am struggling to tear the plastic from the canvas for some odd reason. Spent a good 5 minutes real time opening it up. And we're all set to go. Before lying the colors on, I'm sketching out the scenery with a pencil to use as a guide. Normally, I don't take up too much time on this step because this is just a layout of a landscape, not many details involved. Next, I'm coating the canvas with a thin layer of white paint. I try a lot of things when using acrylics and one is mixing them with a little water. I'm doing so to have the paint lay smoother and blend the next color I'll be using into a baby blue. Also, low viscosity paints, especially acrylics, dry quite fast so it makes it difficult following the wet on wet technique. I'm more so improvising how my paints will lie. Once I finish the background color, I'll go in for some clouds by lightly dabbing a 1 inch brush with white paint starting from the corner. My main technique is basically dabbing and grazing throughout this entire video. Get used to it. Just lightly touch and swish. Touch and swish. To create sky depth, there is plenty of cloud layering with diluted paints. I do in fact go a little overboard, but I'll move on for the sake of blue color I have left. Bob Ross would lead demonstrations on how to paint mountains in most videos by him, so I'm for sure adding them to my painting. Although I'm not exactly following his steps because I'm not using oil paints, it should work out with my methods. I take a 1 inch brush and after laying out the position relatively of where my mountains are, I begin filling in the space with nice large brush strokes, pulling the color down right from the path lines. I went over with another layer of mossy green paint for shading and filling purposes. Initially I was going for a distant tree range, it did however end up blending so I went along with shadows that I believe suited the painting more. To give my mountains a little bit of character, I'm choosing the lightly tarnished looking brush to apply some white paint at the top of each mountain for snow. I've made my way to starting on the evergreen trees. Time for a short tutorial. Dipping a flat half inch brush in the darkest of your green shades, drag the brush down on the canvas for a tree trunk. Perform a zigzagging motion starting from the top. And softly touching the canvas with the tip of the brush, move your way down. If you're familiar with Bob Ross's style of painting the Z trees, this is quite similar to that. Spread the branches out. If they are too tightly packed, you will be left with a rather large blurry shadow of a tree. Instead, we want to give the branches a little split skirt appearance, so curve them upwards. Afterward, use a light shade of green to highlight parts of the tree branches. Imagine what particular area the sun would hit and apply the light color there with little pressure. Color update. By this point my green paint died, my blue paint was long gone and the brown paint was a cough away from drying out. So I, expecting such a turnout, reserved to using orange and yellow to paint deciduous trees. I took a fluffy brush dipped in two colors at once and filled the entire center section in with yellow bushes. However, lacking the darker colors, the new trees ended up looking two dimensional creating a mess of yellow and orange. But according to Bob Ross, we are only capable of a happy accident, serendipity if you will. So in efforts of reviving the dimension in my painting, I took the remaining red and brown to sculpt the brush and add a few other details. You know, the first video I saw of Bob Ross, I was entranced by how swiftly and naturally he worked as if the painting scene was already embedded in his memory. 
I looked him up thinking the man must have started perfecting technique from a young age, but he discovered oil painting in his 20s while in the US Air Force. His prime years of fame were in his 40s and he became known by people worldwide. It's truly inspiring how someone can find their purpose and reach success despite the time it took. Alright, almost done. That's why you're so hard to read That's why you're perfectly wrong for me Yeah Oh yeah, my brother was practicing guitar and I managed to catch a few seconds on camera <laughs> Okay, and this is the end result I'm quite happy with it actually This is what we have my green and blue paints emptied halfway through the process, so I had to improvise with some orange and yellow to finish the picture. Now it's a fall landscape. Currently I'm down to these four colors, so watch my next video to see what I can make of them. See ya, bye!